Normally doing graffiti would get you in trouble. But today we're going to show you a place where people actually like it. Hi, welcome to Around the World with Joshua and Alyssa. We are going to show you another place in Portugal today. We only spent a couple days there, but we saw so much. And so we have something else to show you today from Lisbon. So I'm gonna get right into it. When we were in Lisbon, we drove around a lot. We were looking for all these different places that I had <laughs> found on Google. And one of the ones we were most excited about looking at was this big castle that you could see up on this hill. Mm -hmm. So we saw it from a distance and online it showed pictures of it and it looked really cool and we couldn't find a place to park near it. So we parked farther away and we got out and we said, well, there it is. And look, there are people in there walking up and down the steps over there on the left side of the castle. So we thought, well, we'll just climb up the, the hill uh, through the streets and we'll go to it that way. Along the way, we saw some really neat things like this musical fountain thing or <laughs> something. I, I guess it wasn't musical, but it was a fountain and it looked really cool. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what it's supposed to be, a ship or a building or... Modern art. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just that. Uh, if Jaden... Uh, if we had time, he probably would have liked just splashing in it on the sidewalk there, but <laughs> we wanted to get to the castle. Well, along the way, we found a side alley that looked like this. And I thought, oh, this is kind of fancy <laughs> and different. And so we decided we would walk through this because actually looking at the maps, uh, this was also kind of like a shortcut to get to the castle. So we walked through, and there was a lot of graffiti everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and it looked like it was supposed to be there for whatever reason. It wasn't like... People it, weren't painting over it or anything. Yeah, and it wasn't like a dark alley or something or no. all dirty. <laughs> it didn't look like it was sketchy. We just, and it's all in Portuguese, so we didn't know what it all said. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if there's something bad here, but it looks okay. Anyway, so we're walking through and yeah, there's some nicer stuff and some stuff that kind of looks like your normal just weird graffiti stuff like on the right bottom side here. And we saw more and more people as we were walking through and we saw a tour guide with a group of people. <laughs> we thought, oh, this is like some really neat place. So we're going up the steps here and apparently this here is all just random street graffiti but this is an actual mural and this is dedicated to Fado music I don't know what that is <laughs> uh, but yeah this is some really large mural that I think maybe multiple people helped work on and apparently there are lots of these in the city I didn't know that I thought this oh. was like one spot but there are several other places with a lot of artistic graffiti like this. And uh, so if you were to look this up, like Graffiti Alley in Lisbon, you're not just going to find this. You'll find some other places. <laughs> uh, and there's some more. But this went on for like three blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really unique. And we didn't know exactly what all this was, but we thought it was really neat mm -hmm. on our way to the castle. So just wanted to share that with you. Uh, if I see graffiti here in the States, I typically don't walk down those alleys or stick around. <laughs> but this was unique because it yeah. was like in a nice area, but it seemed like they were embracing the graffiti. Yeah, and there was a tour works. guide with a tour group, so it wasn't just as random as you might think at first sight. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay, I have some more missionary story. We left Isabel kind of in a tough place because her college professor was basically questioning like was god really real did isabel just believe it just because her family believed it and so that put a lot of doubts in isabel's mind and she realized she went to church 
she did good things. She kind of read the Bible, but it was just because it was all things her family did. And it wasn't because it was something she truly believed. So she stopped doing all those things. She stopped going to church. She stopped trying to, like, make better choices one over the other. And she stopped reading the Bible because she's like, well, I don't really know if it's true or not. So maybe it's not even worth my time. And she became discouraged, really discouraged. And she would have a hard time sleeping at night and she would just lay awake in her bed and just look around and wish she could fall asleep. And she just felt so empty for so many days. And um, then she found out that the boyfriend that she was dating was with another girl too. And that was really hard for her to understand and, and to process. And she lay awake in her bed and she thought, man, maybe life isn't even worth it. Maybe it's not worth it to be alive and I don't even understand why I'm here. Well, one night when she was really desperate, she got out of her bed and she got on her knees and she said, God, if you're really there, please give me peace. And if you give me peace, I'll follow you and do whatever you want me to do with my life. Just please help me to have peace in my life because nothing seems to make sense. Well, she got back to bed and she actually fell asleep that night and she woke up the next morning and she was like, oh, well, now I need to follow through on my side. I told God I would serve him and I, I would learn more about him, so I guess I need to do that. So she knew how she needed to learn more about God and that was to open her Bible. So she started reading, especially in the New Testament, and she thought, you know, I know that Jesus is God, and the words he says are really important. So as she read her Bible, she underlined all the words that were things that Jesus said, and she began to understand who Jesus was. To, she really understood who Jesus was to her, not just to her family. And then she began to understand who God is. And through that process, she understood that she wanted to accept Jesus as her personal savior, not to just know information about who he was and just go to church just because her family did, but because she wanted to know who he was and she knew that God really did give peace and she wanted that peace in her life. Well, a few years later, um, she went to a Bible conference and Isabel met this missionary, Mr. J. O. Frazier, and he had come from one of the farthest corners of China. And he was talking about the people group that he served while he was in China. And he worked with the Li Su people of China. And he was really excited because he had spent so many years learning about these people and trying to learn their language. And he explained that the Li Su people live high, high in the mountains. And they live in these little houses made out of bamboo. And they kind of live like right on the edge of all of the mountains. So he said, when you look up and you see the farthest corners, a lot of times that's where the Li Su people live. And um, Mr. Fraser said, and I've worked really hard to learn their language. And it's been very difficult because it's a language that's not even written down. So he worked hard to learn the language to speak it, and then he developed a way to write it so then the people could read some of their own things, have some of their own things in writing, and other people could learn the language. Well, as Isabel heard about this people group, she thought, wow, that sounds really amazing. People that live up in the mountains, but they need to know the good news of Jesus too. They need to have peace in their lives too. And she really was burdened for these people that they would get to know the good news of Jesus. So she talked to the missionary about the needs for these people and how missionaries and other people could help. And she got really excited. She thought, maybe God wants me to be a missionary to the Lisu people too. So she went home to talk to her family about it. And she told her mother that she really wanted to be a missionary to the Lisu people. And she was so surprised at how her mom responded. You're going to have to come back next time to see how Isabel's mom responded to her idea of going to be a missionary to the Lisu people. Oh, we have a special guest. Yeah. This is baby Jaden. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> there That's you a go. a little wave. There. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Can you say hello to all your fans? Right up there? There's a camera up there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Okay, well, we're going to tell you today about a ministry in Greece that we got to go to see together. 
-hmm. and it's a church. And it's also known as Athens Baptist Church, uh, but we referred to it as Voice of Truth when we were there. They're, they're both the exact same place, exact same group. And there is the... the like emblem? Yep, the logo, the sign on the front of their building. And when you enter, it looks like this. And it's like uh, three or four stories tall. Mm -hmm. But the, the first level is where they meet and like have their fellowship time. And the second level is where they have their service. And then people live up on the third and maybe fourth levels. So what was really cool about this place is that they are bilingual English and Greek. So we went to the Sunday morning service and the preacher, he knows English and Greek fluently, but he preached in Greek while the guy translated for him into English. And so that's what's happening here. And we had a time of singing and they are live streaming it with that little camera <laughs> there on that uh, monopod. And one of my favorite parts was the Filipino ladies choir. <laughs> In Greece. Yeah. So we were sitting behind these ladies and I looked at them and I thought, man, they look really Filipino and they sound Filipino. Because if anyone knows what Filipinos sound like, it's me because I grew up in a family with Filipino and uh, <laughs> Filipino dad and Filipino relatives. So I know what their accent sounds like when they're speaking in English. So anyway, I asked them and they said, yeah, we came from the Philippines here to Greece. And then when they got up to sing, it made even more sense because Filipinos love to sing so much. More, more than just about anybody I know except maybe the <laughs> Ghanaians. And uh, so they got up and they sang. And then we went to lunch after the service. And in the afternoon we came back and we got to listen in on a service in Farsi. So these are all refugees mostly who came from uh, Iran and uh, this church, Athens Baptist Church, has actually seen literally hundreds of people come through their church in the last several years because all these refugees who want to have a better life, they come through Athens. And on their way through, they, they actually got to find out about this church through word of mouth. And so, so many people have come through through the years and a few have stayed and we got to meet some of them. Um, but a lot of them, they come through, many of them get saved and then they go on to another part of Europe. But on Sunday afternoon, they have a service for them. And on Thursday evening, they are, yes, you're right. <laughs> on Thursday evening, they actually have another uh, like Bible study time for them. And so we got to go to that as well. Or maybe that was Friday night. It was one of those nights. But we went to that and the crowd was just as big as their Sunday afternoon crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the, the guys on our team uh, spoke to them that night with a interpreter. And at the end of the service, I got to be there uh, with this man in the gray. Uh, he accepted Christ as his savior that night. And then, so these men uh, prayed with him and uh, thanked God for his new life in Christ. And so that was really exciting to see because they tell you the stories about all these people who get saved, but then you actually get to see one. That was really neat. The pe some of these people have some crazy stories, though, of how they got to Greece, how they're getting there on these little, like, inflatable rafts and um, little boats that should not hold that many, the number of people that are on there, but they're just trying to escape what mm -hmm. their home country life is like. And they also told stories about how people would be in jail or in prisons and they would see the words... Um, the voice of truth and that people were supposed to go look for this place voice of truth mm -hmm. and then people would come to Greece and to Athens and they would find this ministry and then get to hear the gospel so it's a really cool story of how God is using a rough situation 
where these people live in their homeland to bring them to a place where they can learn about who God is and have a true relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what else is really neat right now about this time is they were able to purchase the area right next to them and put up a newer building, taller and nicer. And so our Sunday there was their last Sunday using the original space. And they, this, so this is in the new building right next door. And they were going to tear down the wall once they got approval by the city. Uh, they were going to tear down the wall on a couple of the levels to combine the space. And this new space was really, really nice. nice. I mean, from the, the marble floors to the electrical LED lighting and all sorts of things and just the design, huge space. But really well used. Yeah, it was incredible. This is up on the roof and they can use this space to have meals or Bible studies or whatever they can just spread out up there and then something else that was really neat was when we went there for that evening service later in the week afterwards we had the privilege of eating supper and it was a traditional Persian oh, so good yeah all that food was really awesome. and you look at it and I can't describe the flavors no because they were they very were different so <laughs> different but good mm-hmm and so that is Voice of Truth. That's a very small glimpse <laughs> of Voice of Truth and uh, their ministry there in Athens. Mm -hmm. But it's a really cool ministry. Mm -hmm. So you can pray for them and as they reach out to lots and lots of people that come through. Yeah. And baby Jaden was really popular there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had lots of friends. <laughs> We got there and we didn't have to hold him or do anything until we were ready to leave and then we had to take him away from people because <laughs> they enjoyed him so much, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you come back next time to learn more and see more about Europe and hear more of our missionary story. Yep. Bye. Ciao.